everybody. Welcome back to our Facebook Live session. Uh, today we're very excited. We have an announcement. We want to tell everyone that our UK uh, version of the Alzheimer's Solution uh, was published on the 5th of this yesterday. month. Yesterday. Yesterday. And we're super excited. And here's the copy. So for all the the audience and our follower, uh, followers in UK and other countries such as Australia, India, um, South New Zealand, Africa. South Africa. You can purchase the book. Taiwan. Taiwan in uh, in uh, it's on bookshelves Patagonia. in your local. No, I just made that one up. <laughs> <laughs> You're confusing me. No. It's on your local bookstore bookshelf. So go ahead and get your copy and, and let us know what you think. Yeah, thank you to our amazing Simon and Schuster popular group. By the way, at the same time that our book is coming out, the other small book uh, is coming out from them as well. Uh, I think it's called the. Uh, Hillary Clinton's book, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> that's around the same time. No competition, but uh, uh, they're both being published by uh, Simon and Schuster. We're we're extremely uh, thankful. And then our U.S. book uh, is uh, with the, the, our remarkable team with uh, Harper uh, One. Harper One. They're they're amazing. So please support us. The book is all about science, validated science, not just the latest. Uh, a trend with their followers, but the science that's been validated, we tried never to overstate uh, where we did. We actually made the language that actually pointed to where this is extrapolation and the data is strong. And more importantly, all of this is for the communities. Uh, uh, the, the, we just gave a talk this afternoon Yes. about the fact that when it comes to the brain, we're not addressing the fact that it is part of the rest of the body and it is affected by everything that happens to us, environmental and otherwise. Why would the heart be affected? Kidney, we've accepted all this, but not the brain. The brain is even more affected because it's consuming 25% of the, our body's energy. Absolutely. So we're trying to create a paradigm shift. We're trying to bring healthcare, which is actually not what's happening in our clinics. That's disease care, which is important. Yes. Healthcare is in your homes and in your communities. And 100% of the profits from this book go back to the communities. We have already started campaigns in beach cities and and, and, and other uh, in San Bernardino and other places. And if you want us to come to the, your community, yep. we're more than willing to come and give talks, create workshops, and create a movement. You lead, we follow. Leadership starts at, at, at the ground level. So um, we're looking forward to this. And to that effect, we actually wanted to talk about a subject which is about marriages and, and partnerships, in fact, not just marriages, people who live together for a long period of time, and how they affect each other's disease processes, specifically brain health, Alzheimer's risk. So um, obviously for a great majority of the world, um, there's a joke there, but I'm not gonna go there. When you marry together, uh, you're genetically not linked. Uh, it, so what else could be affecting each other? Well, environmental so, factors. So, yeah. so there, there is data that shows that partners of individuals who have Alzheimer's disease yes have 600% higher risk of developing the disease compared to those who don't have partners of Alzheimer's disease. That's just a crazy number. Six times. Six How times, can yeah. you be six times higher at a risk of developing Alzheimer's disease even though you don't have the genetics? Correct. And you know this was published a while ago and a lot of the neurologists and scientists have um, you know, brought about uh, conditions such as stress and, you know, just the emotional and yeah. the physical stress that people go through taking care of a loved one who has Alzheimer's disease. But there's much more to that story. Yeah, uh, th this speaks to our lifestyle component. I mean, what do you share as a partner? You share common foods. And oh, by the way, that relationship was stronger the longer you live together. Exactly. Look at that, what, what in science we call dose response. So the more the dose, the greater the outcome. Perfect dose, dose response, response phenomenon here. Mm -hmm. So what are the things that we share? Our neuro plan, our neuro component, nutrition. Yeah. After a very short while, you start eating the same things, even though at the beginning you might have different proclivities. Aisha loved chocolate, she still loves chocolate. So that hasn't I been do. affected. I do. And, and I, I do. was a meat eater, now I'm, 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 I'm not. And, and uh, so we've actually kind of come together. I've, uh, she's very spicy. Food. She's not very, I'm not saying she's very spicy. The food she likes is very spicy. Yes. But, I like spices. And I used to hate it, but I started. I'm starting to like it more and more. Right. And uh, so that that so commonality. Then the next thing is exercise, activity level. 
we kind of motivate each other to exercise. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You definitely motivate me when it comes to exercise. <laughs> yeah, so we, so we do pull-ups, we do push-ups, we have a, created a mini gym, so, and then Taekwondo together. Oh, yeah. And that's a, that, that actually has increased my risk because when we do Taekwondo, she's got longer legs, so I get hit in the head <laughs> quite often. But that's having said that. Uh, but I make you run and I'm making exactly, you be vigilant. Exactly. So my, I'm actually helping you. I'm uh, growing your brain. I, I never said yeah, except for the head trauma. But then the exercise. Yeah. Then you get stress levels. We stress each other. Uh, I think I stress her more. And in, in fact, even today, I stressed her quite we, a bit. We stress each other. That's true. And I wanted to talk about that. Um, I mean, you know, jokes apart. Yeah, of course, we stress each other at times. You know, we, we lived together for 14 years, so the smaller things in life always affect each other. But say, for example, if a loved one is sick or if one of us is going through a yes. major change in life, <clears throat> whether it's with family or job or, or school, whatever it may be, Everybody feels the stress Absolutely. and you go through it together and you actually, it, it makes sense, doesn't it? It affects your sleep. It affects what you eat. It, um, so all of these things, uh, you know, over Bigger. many, many years interact and end up either creating your brain or damaging your brain. Uh, depression. There seems to be a very strong correlation between depression and the families beyond the genetics, husbands and wives. Mm -hmm. Though uh, there's a higher rate of depression among husbands or wives of those who have depression. The same thing with children. Uh, that's been confounded with, with genetic component, but still there is a there is an environmental component as well, significant anxiety. Yes. I, I you know I give talks about children and anxiety levels. Oh, I mean yeah. the 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 one variable for leadership, and uh, which is courage. The rest is management and uh, courage and and fearlessness, which is leadership and with a vision, of course, fearlessness with a vision, is the anxiety level in the household. In a household where there's mismanagement of anxiety or misentitlement of anxiety or uh, missed, uh, you know, missed uh, opportunities to actually redress that concept that, okay, there's anxiety, but this is how we will deal with it. In those in families, the anxiety level is high. These children have been actually found to have higher depression, suicide, and definitely as far as job levels and, mm -hmm. and complexity, much lower. That's true. In families, especially in the mothers, no pressure. No, and the no, mothers, that's true. mothers who not, don't deal with anxiety well, that's translated. That translated and transmitted to their children very quickly. And we, yeah, we read that article. Correct. Where Correct. they have studied uh, mothers and women with children, and they um, higher rates of anxiety or mismanagement of anxiety or mismanagement of anxiety tend to have children who have the same patterns of anxiety. Yeah, it's interesting and. It's it does. It does. So, so stress levels and how we manage it, or how much we share it, of course, is going to affect our diseases. Mm -hmm. Not just depression, anxiety, suicide, everything. And then uh, sleep, sleep patterns. So we uh, we are trying to have good sleep patterns. Yeah, um, we, uh, that's one area that we need to focus on. Correct. More and more. Uh, it's the Daily Show and this other show, and sometimes you know that we don't watch that much TV, but the one show or editing the book or editing the book or the or, blog or, the or answering to some of the comments. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. So all of that is affects your sleep pattern, and you share that. It's almost impossible that you don't share the oh, sleep absolutely. patterns. And then finally, mental activity. Something that people thought that, that that's not sure, and especially in the past, the husband went to work and the wife did something different. But no, but it's not about just that. It's what happens at home when you come or in the weekends or uh, how much conversation or kind of conversation you have. After all, that becomes the family level of, of cognitive activity. activity, even at work. So it is critical that we talk about this stuff. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of connectivity and resilience that doesn't happen unless you you address it at home. Uh, going back to sleep, sleep apnea. You know, there's a joke that men who are married live seven years. Like there's soft statistics: seven years longer than men who are single, and women who are married live six years shorter than women who are single. Mm -hmm. Well, that might be a joke, <laughs> but but there's a relationship between marriage and 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 mortality. But sleep. Sleep apnea is almost impossible to diagnose unless the partner says, you know, my husband is, is, not, is snoring a lot and is holding his breath and yeah. is tired during the day. Mm -hmm. So one of the most important factors of determining if somebody actually gets a follow-up yeah. 
is the partner saying that they have a problem? Yeah, well, as a matter of fact, when we see patients who have cognitive impairment in our clinic or even stroke and some other neurological diseases, we have to have the partner there. Yeah, because, absolutely. Yeah, you know, other than just being a good source of information, you get a good picture of what their lifestyle is at home. Correct. Yeah. And, and you can't bring change in the home unless both people bring change. Exactly, as, as, as far as treatment it goes. Correct. Know, the husband or the wife, whoever the partner is, has to be involved in changing the household, has to be involved in the treatment and the lifestyle change. Correct. Otherwise, yeah. it's not going to happen. Uh, most I, of the time. I say that, uh, you know, I, I'm treating, let's say, the wife, but the husband is getting a treatment for free. But in reality, that's, in reality, that's what has to happen. Both people have to be addressed, the, both their uh, risks, both their uh, uh, opportunities of change have to be addressed, otherwise change will never happen. It's very difficult. Diet is difficult, exercise is difficult. Yeah. Unless there is a general culture, that's the next thing, exactly. in the family of, of exercise, of organizing, then it's not going to happen, ever. And, and the same concept of the partner of those with Alzheimer's disease having a higher risk for the disease applies to the entire community, to yes. the society. You know, what kind of culture do you have in your family as far as uh, general life is concerned as far as health is concerned. You know, what do you eat during your parties? You know, what, how, how do you spend your weekends together? Do you just sit around and eat or is it more of an active, Absolutely. you know, event getting together? So, and that, it, it makes sense when we say Alzheimer's is actually a disease of the family. It is, it is. Actually, not just Alzheimer's. Most chronic diseases are family diseases. If you've lived with somebody long enough and then that pattern you pass on to your children. I mean, what better gift to teach them how to organize, which actually applies to all aspects of organizing. You don't learn management and leadership and health management at, at, uh, in, a, in a university. You learn it at home early on. So what better gift to pass on? Absolutely. Uh, in one of the future uh, talks, we will talk about culture and the role of community or even parties. I'm, I'm challenging families out there. You know, throw parties that are healthy. I mean, it's almost as if, uh, have the courage. Courage comes from, I, I'm gonna be a little judgmental, a little pushy here. That's okay, I'm a nice guy, so uh, <laughs> I'm a nice guy. Yes, I, you are. Yeah. So uh, I, I'm gonna be pushy. Be the courageous ones. Throw a party for you know, 20, 30 people with healthy food. Uh, don't succumb to the lowest denominator. Uh, it, this is a gift that we're going to give because we're going to say, oh, we're not alone. Oh, this person did it and this person did it. Mm -hmm. And it's not just about food and exercise and activities. You always say the, the, the statement that the best gathering is where people get together and play cards. Yeah. And then they either sing or they dance at the end of the party. Correct. And then they <laughs> eat healthy food during uh, Absolutely. Event, so. Absolutely. But the, the relationship between husband and wife and their kids is the number one factor of health. Yes. Health is determined by what you do at home. Health is, affects everybody, mm -hmm. the stress levels, how we manage the stress, that's critical. Even beyond home, when it comes to college and how people, kids deal with college stress and anxiety, how they deal with business anxiety, that's learned at home. Food, it's, you know, the bad foods that I eat will actually be passed on to everybody else as the kid and the kids. Of course. And, and every activity. Yeah. So it sounds like, this sounds like a common sense factor. It's not, if it was common sense, we would have done it. Right. If it was if it was a common knowledge, we would have done it. I I say that the reason that ninety percent of diets fail, the that ninety percent of health promotion behaviors actually higher number fail, is because it's approached in a very singular way. Absolutely. One person here's your recipe, which actually is supposed to fit for everybody, and go home, and the whole family is not addressed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so I think this is an opportunity. Uh, we would, we, we're gonna ask you to send us your pictures of your family doing something together. Uh, please do that. Also send us your pictures of you with, with our book, but, but, and we'll share it, but also f uh, uh, pictures of your family doing a, um, a, a, a healthy a game, mental game together, uh, healthy uh, dinners together, uh, exercising together as a family, yes. and, and share that. We want to make a movement. If our medicine was just being in the clinic, which is important, and treating the acute condition or disease, I, I don't think either one of us would have done this. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. the, but uh, we, we love that component, but this is much more important. And uh, so please join our family. 
so we can make a difference for the bigger family. Absolutely. I think it's very important to address it as early as possible. A lot of us think, you know, these are some of the issues that we can push further and further away. Even, you know, sometimes when we have small kids, we never think about, you know, healthy lifestyle. But it's critical to actually start at that stage because you're not only, you know, giving them the necessary items that they need for, for their growth, but you're actually teaching them healthy lifestyle and it starts very early. Habits. Anxiety management, stress management, just being organized, generally speaking, is yes. very important. So we have to start it early. Yes. So that's it, basically it for today. Um, uh, join us again next week. We're going to talk about a different topic. If there are certain topics that you're interested in and you would like yes. us to speak about it, please let us know. We would be happy to do some research on it and speak about it. Um, other than that, thank you so much for the comments. And uh, we will see you guys next week. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Bye.